The top and bottom of the circle represent the northern and southern hemispheres, but the left and the right are not Earth hemispheres. They represent the direction of travel. The left side represents a westbound track and the right one an eastbound track. Then we added the letters DIID to represent the words decrease, increase, increase, decrease. To show that if, for instance, we have an eastbound track in the northern hemisphere, the great circle track angle will increase. Just as it did in this example, it increased from track angle A to track angle B. This allows us to arrive at a second definition of convergency. In addition to being the angle of inclination between two selected meridians measured at a given latitude, convergency is also the change in great circle track direction between two points. We also have to modify our formula slightly because in this case, the two meridians are not crossed at the same latitude. Unless flying due east or west, there will be some element of north or south change of latitude between the meridians. In this case, we cannot use the simple convergency formula of change of longitude times sine of latitude because there are two latitudes to consider. Instead, we take the sign of mid-latitude or of mean latitude, which with only two points is the same thing, to give us the formula convergency equals change in longitude times the sign of the mean latitude, where mean latitude is the mean or average latitude between the two points. What we have just found is the basic convergency equation. However, you may get questions which require you to transpose it. For instance, in one of the examples which follows, you will have to calculate the change of longitude. So you will have to make it the subject of the equation. You could also be asked to calculate the mean latitude. Again, it's only a simple transposition. Let's try some practical examples. Here is a typical problem. The initial great circle track from A, which is at 40 north and 2 west, to B, at 50 north and 10 east, is 0, 060 0 degrees true. What is the initial great circle track from B to A. Start by drawing a diagram. It is only a sketch to get the situation in your mind, not a scale drawing. We are in the northern hemisphere, so draw two meridians converging northwards like this. The initial great circle track from one of them is 0, 060 0 degrees true, so make it the left hand one because if you draw it from the right, it goes off the diagram. So choose the other one. The track originates from A on 0, 060. Zero. This means that the left-hand one must be A and the right-hand one B. Check it out by reference to the latitude and longitude. If we've got it right, with an initial track of 0, 060, zero, B should be north of A. It is. It's 50 north where A is 40 north and B should be east of A. It is. It's 10 east where A is 2 west. Now that we've got the diagram right, we can start to calculate the convergency. Remember, the question is, what is the initial great circle track from B back to A? 
convergency equals change in longitude times the sine of the mean latitude. The change in longitude is from 2 west to 10 east. That's 12 degrees. The mean latitude is 45 north. That's halfway between 40 and 50. The sine of 45 degrees is 0 0.7071. So the convergency is 8.5 degrees. Now there are two ways to solve this problem depending on which definition of convergency you prefer. If you use the definition that convergency is the change in great circle track direction between two points, then the great circle track has changed 8.5 degrees between A and B. It left A on a track of 0, 060. 0. So using the DIID rules for increasing or decreasing track, we are looking at a track going eastwards in the northern hemisphere. The track angle will increase. That makes the track at B 068.5. If the track angle onwards at B is 068.5, then the track angle from B back to A measured at position B will be the reciprocal. You add 180 degrees. This makes the initial great circle track from B to A 248.5 degrees true. Alternatively, if you prefer the definition that convergency is the angle of inclination between two selected meridians, then we can do it this way. Draw in a construction line at B parallel to the meridian at A. The meridian at A and the construction line are parallel. So the angle N is also 0, 060 0, because it is a corresponding angle to the initial great circle track. Therefore, the angle from the construction line round to the return track B will be 0, 060 0, plus 180, an angle of 240 degrees measured from the parallel construction line. However, the parallel construction line is not local true north. That is defined by the meridian at B, and it differs from the parallel line by the amount of convergency, which, as we know, is 8.5 degrees in this case. So the initial great circle track from B to A is also 248.5 by this approach. Here's another practical example. The initial great circle track from C, which is at 36 north, 15 east, to D, which is at latitude 42 north, is 300 degrees true, and the final great circle track is 295 degrees true. Firstly, what is the longitude of D? Secondly, what is the great circle track direction at longitude 11 degrees east? As always, you must start with the diagram. We are in the Northern Hemisphere, so again, draw two meridians converging northwards like this. The track from C is 300, so make it the right-hand side, otherwise it will go off the diagram. This means that the left-hand side must be D. Again, check it out for common sense. If it's a track angle of 300 from C, then D must be northwest of C. If you can't see how to start, then write down the convergency equation and substitute in what you know. The way to solve it then usually becomes obvious. Do we know the value of convergency? Yes, we do. The track angle has changed by 5 degrees. 
so we can write the convergency as 5 degrees. Do we know the change in longitude? No, that's what the question is asking. Do we know the mean latitude? Yes, we do, because they've given us the start and finish latitude. It's halfway between 36 and 42 north. It's 39 north. Rearrange the equation to make the change in longitude the subject. And you get the answer that the change in longitude is about 8 degrees. The question has told us that the longitude of C is 15 east and D is 8 degrees further west. So what is the longitude of D?